a couple of technical charts. Bitcoin, it's hardly a technical chart. It's like, breaks 70,000, things going to the moon. Next stop, 100,000. So that's my technical, deep technical knowledge. Break 70, going to the fucking moon. Um, also known as the banana zone. Here's another way of looking at it. This is uh, the Bitcoin halving, the boring zone, the banana zone. The boring zone, actually, I think this is drawn wrong. I would argue the boring zone on this would start in July. Uh, the banana zone would start in July um, and the boring zone finishes at the end of June. Undoubtedly, one of the most popular topics on crypto Twitter at the moment, Raul Pal's banana zone thesis has attracted both ardent believers and staunch critics. The Real Vision founder and CEO has been talking about the banana zone since at least May, when he discussed the thesis, a meme, in a series of interviews and Twitter threads. In one thread, Pal explained that macro summer and fall are driven by the global liquidity cycle which has been cyclical since central banks started coming to the market's rescue in 2008 to avoid the complete collapse of the financial system. This means that when central banks increase their balance sheet, they create more liquidity for the markets, immediately boosting asset prices. While all asset prices, from stocks to bonds and real estate, increase optically because of the lowered denominator, the fiat currency, growth assets, tech and crypto, perform better than other assets, because they are in secular trends based around adoption. PAL's banana zone thesis is based on the cyclicality of global liquidity, that is, central banks' balance sheets, especially its expansionary and peak periods. PAL believes we are nearly upon one of those periods, with liquidity conditions having bottomed out and expected to start rising rapidly at any moment and continue until they peak around June 2025. As central banks start cutting rates and easing up on their quantitative tightening policies, Pal predicts a most exciting period for the cryptocurrency market, with crypto asset prices expected to rise sharply or absolutely go bananas. This is the banana zone, and Pal expects it to start at any moment. In the latest edition of his periodic Drinks with Raul Pal podcast, the renowned macro guru and former Goldman Sachs executive gives much needed updates on the banana zone and how wildly he expects prices to run in the coming months. As we bring you clips from the video, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. You can also check out our other videos featuring insightful analysis and predictions from some of the industry's brightest minds. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. These are just some banana zone charts to help you along. One is we have an overbought, oversold indicator for Bitcoin. We use Bitcoin because it has the longest price history. Um, and what, what it shows from how we built the overbought, oversold is that really we haven't even started the rally yet. We're only just getting into what's known as crypto summer, um, even though it, it's matching with summer. But the crypto cycles, macro cycles are not the actual seasons. They're each year. So we're, we're now in crypto summer. Prices should start to accelerate. Next year will be um, autumn or fall. So we're not overbought. Altcoins, all about the banana zone. The ISM survey is the business cycle. The business cycle is dragging its way higher, still below 50. So the global economy is slow and the US economy is slow. Now, all our forward-looking indicators, and it was all in that big presentation I gave you, they're all rising. And so very soon, the ISM is going to go higher. And altcoins, much like small cap stocks, Follow the business cycle. Why? Because you lot don't have any money yet. As soon as, as soon as the business cycle improves, you love money and start punting. It's as simple as that. Another chart: FedNet liquidity in altcoins is a percentage of Bitcoin total market cap. Um, FedNet liquidity leads by twelve months. It tells you altcoins as a percentage of Bitcoin should start rising. I altcoin season is around the corner, which is the banana zone. Um, I actually don't even understand this chart because Julian's smarter than I am. Uh, it's the core risk indicator Z score or Z score if you're an American. Um, basically, just look at the pink lines. It gets to the top. We're nowhere near it. I, we're not overbought. So nothing to worry about. Bed net liquidity against Ethereum. We should start to see Ethereum and the others move away from Fed liquidity. That's always happens because there's a, it's a, a technological, technological adoption curves. So we should see these rising. Um, FedNet liquidity is starting to come up. 
after the TGA got drawn down, uh, in, increased from the tax credits, the tax take, sorry. Um, and so we should start to see Ethereum do better soon. The other one, financial conditions, they're starting to loosen again. Global M2 follows it. As you know, Global M2 is another driver within this equation. And here's a bit of a money shot. Here's Bitcoin volatility. It's getting right down to that 20% historic volatility line, 10 day. When it gets there, it leads to whopping rallies, i.e. banana zone. And you see the size of these rallies, 83%, 85%, 214% in two, three, four months. And it also happens in Solana. And the numbers are bigger. I mean, look at that September 2023, 521% in three months. That was only recently. We've forgotten about that because the space is so fing dumb. The moment it trades sideways, it's like it's all over. It's because, and I get it, um, everybody's hopes and dreams are in a banana zone. That's what the banana zone actually is. It's a representation of everybody's hopes and dreams. I get it. Um, I, and I know it matters to people a lot. It matters to me a lot. And so when it doesn't happen, you start having that conflicting voice in your head is, what happens if it doesn't happen? What happens if it doesn't happen? What happens if it doesn't happen? F am I going to be feel stupid? How do I f this up? Really, just stick with the program. Pal is not the only one talking about the obvious correlation between global liquidity conditions and crypto asset prices. Marty Pants, host of the Crypto Traders Club, recently posted a chart of the Global Liquidity Index in a post on Twitter, accompanied with the caption, Here we go, kids. Banana zone. It bottomed exactly at the Bitcoin bottom and peaked exactly at the Bitcoin top. Look out for 2025. However, there seem to be as many critics as believers. Some cryptocurrency investors disappointed with recent price movements have been sharing pictures of rotten bananas as the banana zone pal is predicting. As of press time, Bitcoin is trading at $64,259, down by about 2.9% in the past week, and about 5.37% over the past month. However, the leading cryptocurrency has risen by over 47% in six months and over 100% in the past year. In addition, periods of slow price movements are typical of the cryptocurrency market, even during bull markets. Like in previous bull markets, the exciting moments will be almost fleeting, most likely occurring during a small window of three to four months. This is why Pal is quite particular about not it up before it finally begins. Here are more clips from the video. Whether it starts next week, next month, or even September, I don't know and I don't care. What you can't do is stop turning on each other the moment the bloody thing turns sideways. It's ludicrous. Yes, sideways markets in the majors means a complete bloodbath in the stupid shit you picked up, which is why don't f this up. Only have a small portion of stupid shit. They're fun to have. We like it. But if you have too much of this stuff, the moment the dancing stops or the music stops, these things collapse to the floor. This is why I try and explain to you why to have the majority in larger cap tokens that have proven network effects that are working. Then you can speculate and be a true degen with the other stuff. If not, you're going to end up angry and bitter. And all you'll see on Twitter is some bloke who made 100x and you're like, it can be me next, and before you know it, you'll go to zero. So please, please, please don't do that. Another nice one, this is election years. Election years, you get this summer run into August, sideways, election, banana zone, end of year. So the whole banana zone, you can see the shape of it there with a slight kink in it over the September, October period as everyone gets nervous about the election. That's what we should expect. So soon, as they say here in Cayman, soon come. I don't know when. Just relax over it. Here's another way of looking at it. This is uh, the Bitcoin halving, the boring zone, the banana zone. The boring zone, actually, I think this is drawn wrong. I would argue the boring zone on this would start in July. Uh, the banana zone would start in July, um, and the boring zone finishes at the end of June. And this chart, I think, is great. This is altcoins ex Ethereum total, total market cap, last cycle versus this cycle. It's just beautiful. It's so cyclical. Works so well. And again, what lies ahead? Bananas. Tons of big, juicy, ripe bananas. When does the real banana zone happen? The real banana zone happens October, November, December, and then explodes the following year. We go back to the seasonal cycle. We get this run here, sideways, another big run here. I mean, this chart suggests that altcoins 
by this measure, market cap could 10x from here. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. It suggests they go to 7 trillion, which is where I'm starting to get to the, this is a 10 to $15 trillion cycle is where we'll get to on the way to $100 trillion. On the macro side, the rate cuts are starting. Three major central banks, the Bank of Canada, the Swiss National Bank, and the Riksbank, Sweden's central bank, have announced rate cuts over the past month. The Bank of Canada cut its policy rate from 5% to 4.75% on June 5th, the first rate cut announced by the bank in four years. The Swiss National Bank first announced a rate cut in March, followed by another on Thursday, cutting its main policy rate by 25 basis points to 1.25%. The markets are expecting similar moves from the US Federal Reserve in the coming months, though it has signaled that there will be only one rate cut in 2024. However, some investors believe the Fed will become more dovish and less hawkish as the November elections draw closer. Do you believe the banana zone is coming in July? Please share your thoughts on Raoul Pal's insightful analysis and observations about macro and crypto, as well as your predictions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in 2024 and 2025. Additionally, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more content like this. Thank you for watching.